The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome back to Relationship. I am so excited about this episode. You literally have no idea because I'm a Scorpio, so I like talking about sex naturally. I thought you told me you were a Virgo 10 seconds ago. Rising. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not. I'm new to this, not true to this. I'm not trying to call you out on your podcast the first six seconds in. You're like, wait, wait she lied like, to me. The lies. She lied to me. Do Dope. people lie about their astro- astrological signs? Is that the correct way of saying it? Probably. Mm-hmm. I could see people doing that. Yeah, like to try to like uh, get along with somebody, right? Yeah. Like you might lie about where you were born or what kind of coffee you like. And if you are a Gemini, maybe you have a reason to lie. Because mm. you don't want people to know you're crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Let us know. Do you lie about your zodiac sign? This is not what this episode is about. This episode is about sex. Baby, let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that baby. <laughs> let's talk about sex. Uh huh. <laughs> and if you know the voice, then you know the woman, Shan Boudram. Oh, drop a bomb. Sexologist, on sex educator, her sex expert. Mm-hmm. I just need to know because I, I, first of all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm a big fan of yours as well. And meeting you in person, everything makes perfect sense. I'm crazy. You are not crazy. You are um, particular. Not particular is the wrong word. I think that you're, or you, everything looks perfect. Yes. But it's because you care deeply. Yes. You care deeply. I'll say that. But inside it's like a zoom, zoom, Outside tornado. looks phenomenal. Oh, great. It looks phenomenal. Perfect that I'm doing my job. Okay. <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to do. I just need to know, I, I obviously I have a million questions. Our listeners have a billion more questions. Everybody wants to talk about sex, but nobody talks about sex. Why is that? Well, I think it's because everyone is, I think from an educator perspective, they're afraid of being the one who. Like, you know, when mm. you're in grade school and the principal calls home and said, Susie said some inappropriate things in school today. Yeah. And like, what did they say? And then if it's something that you said, then you feel terrible because they repeated the thing that you initiated. But if they said something that you're like, where did they get that from? Then you don't have to have the burden of guilt. Yeah. So I think everybody is trying to pass off that burden of guilt. So they'd rather not be the one to introduce information. So if things don't go well, they aren't the ones to blame. Right. So it's unfortunate because the ramifications of that, you have a bunch of people who nobody tells them anything and they get a bunch of misinformation, but... People, I think, are afraid of telling somebody. I think the, it's the burden of shame being passed on. Yeah. No, that's a good way of putting it because we did a poll on our Instagram stories and 74% of our listeners have never had the sex talk. Growing up, mm. nobody... And I know my mom is actually the one who gave most of my friends the sex talk because she was like, y'all not walking around not knowing about this. We're going to talk about this right now. Shout out to Mrs. But, Crawford. Okay. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Shout out to Mrs. Crawford. She's a baddie for sure. She, But that was because her mom never gave her the sex talk. My grandma did not talk about sex at all ever so when she had kids she has five daughters she's like y'all go know mm-hmm. we weren't allowed to give like any body parts any nicknames it was like this is the vagina that's the penis this is like and it was very just plain out in the open but I have met so many people who did your are, mom go through the different parts of the vagina with you no I don't think she knew all that <laughs> <laughs> I think she just knew the vagina Yes. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. And like everyone has different ones. So don't feel weird if like, you That's know, yours helpful. doesn't look like everybody else's because that wasn't, I feel like we're just learning as we're growing how different our bodies are and how differently our bodies react to certain things. Because even when I talk to my girlfriends about oral sex, some of them are like, I don't like it. I'm like, what? What do you mean? How is that possible? But like, it just goes to show we're all so different. But for you, I heard that you started, you decided that you wanted to make sex like your expertise Mm -hmm. in college. What was it about the topic that like made you want to just jump in? I think a really shitty teen sex life. It was the (laughs) fact that, to be honest, if I really backed it up, I was drawn to sex relationships in the body at a very young age. I'm talking like five years old. And because I was naturally drawn to it, I think from an age appropriate standpoint, I don't look back and think like I was deviant. I think I was treated that way, but Mm. I was like, no, I just knew that this was a pure, good and happy part of my life that if I interacted with in a responsible way, I would not only benefit from it individually, but those around me would, would benefit from it. Yeah. But I, I grew up, I have a West Indian family. And my, Same. Oh, really? Yes. That makes sense. From you, Jamaica. Oh, uh, Guyana. <gasps> so Guyana is my dad and my mom is Dominican. 
So for them, having a child who was comfortable with their body or was very physically affectionate or whose Barbies were always naked was like cause for pause. And it was a big deal. And then kind of similarly, not wanting to get that phone call, my parents Mm. got that phone call of like, your daughter is doing this. Where did she get this from? And you just don't, as a parent, want Mm. that. So instead of looking for ways to find healthy outlets for me, they shut it down completely. And so I didn't interact with my sexuality, I think from the age of like five until 14 when hormones kicked into play. And then I had no choice but to constantly engage because I was Mm -hmm. just horny all the time. Oh my God, those teenage hormones. Those were, yeah, they're a lot. It's like that, what's that cartoon that everyone, Big Mouth? Is Mm -hmm. it Big Mouth with the the sex hormone like demon that pops up and is like, masturbate? Yes, it is exactly (laughs) like that. And I think it's so important that we have these bits of con content out there right yeah. now because now you don't feel like you're alone because at the time right. it's happening to you you think that no one else can relate right and then you've been told that you're going to go to hell if you do this that you're a bad person you're a bad daughter right and so when you have these feelings you're like there's something deeply wrong with me and yeah. so i had that feeling of there's something deeply wrong with me and so in essence i still had the urges though which allowed which caused me to act out in ways i wasn't proud of So by the time I turned 19, I had seven sexual partners, zero orgasms, zero positive connection. My self-esteem was really low. I had orgasms with myself. I had learned to masturbate, Mm -hmm. which interestingly enough, I knew how to masturbate, but I didn't know where the clitoris was. Oh, I don't think I knew. I didn't know what to call it. Yeah. I knew if I rubbed the outside, things worked. But in my belief system, the clitoris was inside the vagina, which is Mm. why in porn, people responded so ravenously to penetration. Um, so I, th- I was always looking for the right penis. I was like, oh, sex doesn't feel good because I haven't found the right penis yet. Mm. Where really it was like, no, bitch, do the same. You know how you DJ by yourself yeah. and it works out great? Yeah. You need that wicca, in the wicca. bedroom. Right. right. <laughs> so I essentially right. got to a place at 19 where I was at a crossroads of either my parents and religion was right, this is bad, or I don't have good information. I'm like, look, before I go and d- devote my life to nunnery, let me just see mm-hmm. if there's more information out there. So I went to a library and I learned, I read every possible book about sex and realized there was great information. But to me, I would never naturally find that unless I'd hit rock bottom because mm. it wasn't interesting. It wasn't sexy. It wasn't palatable. It wasn't the coldest winter ever. It wasn't Gossip Girl, my favorite TV show. So I thought, <laughs> is there a person who can make sex education sexy? And at the time, there was no one that I knew of who fit that. So yeah. I thought I could be that. I love that. You have to take the bull by the horns, literally. You really do, yeah. Because they're not going to give it to you. And it's true. Like like I said, my grandma, who, you know, we grew up in a West Indian family, it's not something you talk about. You don't talk about those kinds of things. And so for, uh, you know, our generation or even some of our parents' generations, it's very important to, like, instill that kind of education into your kids, especially when, you know, like my, like you were talking about your Barbies, having, yes. like, mine would literally be laying on top of each other underneath the air hockey table. And would, I would you be get like, in trouble? No, because I don't think my parents knew that I was doing that. Oh. But I was like, I would lay them on top of each other and be like, I'm going to give you five minutes. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like shocking that in my young Which, brain interestingly enough that's the average length of time see of i was sex. ahead of my time ahead of my time <laughs> but i think i think that there's just something to lack of education being a part of why people don't talk about sex because they don't want to seem stupid or like there's some kind of embarrassment that takes place where you think that like i should know this because we've gotten a lot of questions from people who are like, this is my first time, I'm 30 years old, I'm 20 years old, like I'm the first one out of all my friends who hasn't had sex. Like what are tips for first timers? I guess straight out of the gate because some people don't even know what that feeling is like. I think as a first timer, you're at an advantage in many ways because you don't have that burden of knowingness. Mm-hmm. I the better way of putting this, but kind of like what you were just saying. What really struck me as so crazy about this space is you're not encouraged to get a sex education. We all acknowledge we didn't get it growing up. Mm -hmm. Majority of us didn't have healthy examples of relationships growing up. We're not taught this in school. And yet, if you were caught reading a book, you'd be the loser. Mm -hmm. You'd be the weirdo. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody wants to be great at sex. Everybody wants to be great at love, but we 
don't acknowledge that this doesn't just fall from the sky. Right. But it's almost like if you admit that you need help, you're the person with the real problem. Right. So I, I actually think sometimes what ends up happening is people are in that programming of I don't learn anything. I don't know anything. I don't act like I have any ignorances. I just go in and blindly pretend I'm the expert. Yeah. And they can find themselves 10 years deep before they look up and say, I actually don't know what I'm doing. Mm. So if you're somebody who hasn't yet, and especially if you're older, and you're seeking out knowledge, I think that you have the benefit of going in there curious. Yeah. And that to me is the recipe for a great sexual partner, period. I think mm-hmm. the person who says like, I'm amazing in the bedroom. Girl, right. Oh my. Because exactly, because I'm gonna think you're gonna come in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, if someone says to you, like, I'm gonna cook you the best spaghetti ever. And then they don't ask you a single question. Like you made this whole meal, but mm-hmm. hey, I don't eat meat. Mm-hmm. But or there's you mushrooms. were like, I, don't like I know how to make spaghetti. So yeah. you're so headstrong in the way that you've done things. Yeah. That you're not curious about how the other person wants things to be done for them. Right. So I think as a first timer, leaning into that like greenness, like I'm curious, I'm new, um, which everybody should really have that. Can yeah. actually make you a better lover than the person who's been having sex for 15 plus years. I also think that like the whole concept of virginity. I'm going to go down a very feminist rabbit hole. But I just feel like it's rooted in patriarchal bullshit that it shouldn't even exist. Like my sisters and I have, we're, we talk about these things all the time, but like virginity is a construct. Mm-hmm. It's a social construct. Like what does that even mean? Because a lot of people's first introduction into sex wasn't a positive one. Some people have had really, really horrible, horrific experiences, and maybe it turns them off from sex for a really long time, and then they finally have their first time, but they're like, is it really my first time? And is it your first time if like you've had bad sex partners and then you have a really, really amazing one that's like feels like it's the first time? Like what do you what do you think about virginity? Yeah, everything that you just said. It is as important as you mentally want to make it. Right. But in it's just like, do you remember the first time you had sushi? Maybe no, maybe yes. No. Right? It's just kind of a, it's <laughs> one of many times you're going to do something. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, the first or the 40th doesn't really make a difference. I mean, it does if something negative happens, something very positive happens. So right. it's the experience itself that makes it important or not important rather than like the number in which the experience occurred. But I also am a firm believer of whatever you think is true is true. Yeah. So if you think that having your first sexual experience is a big deal, whether or not it is or it isn't, you're going to think about it every single day. Right. It's going to color the way that you feel about yourself. It's going to color the way that you feel about conversations, even with your parents, because you're like, I'm different now that I've had sex. Mm-hmm. So if you think it's a big deal, it's a big deal. But the truth of the matter is, is that I, it's not going to be your best sex, I hope. Oh, my God. Um, it'll just be like a time that you had sex. And yeah. I know for me, like when I was in that beginning phases of, you know, managing horniness and shame and everything else like my body count mattered to me more than anything else in the world Mm. i would wake up thinking about it and genuinely if you asked me today i'd have to like really and i know the number like the ballpark but i'd have to like count on my fingers because it's not top of mind for me yeah but at a certain point in my life you couldn't tell me it didn't matter because it's all i thought about but did you think about it because you thought about what other people would think if they knew it or were you genuinely like feeling shame or or anything negative about it yeah i think a mix of both i think it was like a constant like that was you know maybe it was how close am i to going to hell or Mm, how mm -hmm. much am i likely to find a long-term partner is someone going to want to marry me one day do i love and respect myself like it that number meant something to me because i made it made something to me and obviously that's from social conditioning but that to be said we can aim to get to the place where your first time having sex doesn't really have any significance to you but we have to also acknowledge we live in a society that does does still place a lot of weight on that so if you still place a lot of weight on that give yourself grace yeah let's talk about first times you remember yours of course yeah how long was it how long did it last yeah oh down to like that i actually don't i didn't realize that my first sexual experience partner i was their first until 10 years later (sighs) Wow. So I think at the time it wasn't so short that I thought, bitch, you lying. Yeah. This was your first. Yeah. Um, so I, I would assume maybe it was like probably five minutes or something like that. Yeah. Was yours very um, rapid? You know, when I think about it, <laughs> because it was it was my high school, one of my high school boyfriends. It was both of our first time. Um, I remember my family, like we were packing up to leave. First of all, mom, dad, family, 
tune out. This ain't for y'all. <laughs> okay. This is not for any of this isn't for anyone. Your mom heard herself getting bigged <laughs> up. Friend. So she's like, yeah. oh, you invited her friends to come she's listen. She's tuned in. She's like, sex talk. Yeah. <laughs> no, not you, girl. Log off. Anyways, we were moving. We were moving states. And so my entire house was like packed up with boxes. And my high school boyfriend and I were like, we need to make this happen before I leave. Like, let's just do it. Like, we want to be each other's first. Let's just do it. So we go down in the basement. We're surrounded by boxes. There's literally nothing. There's nowhere to lay down. There's there's a couch. But like, we were like, eh, maybe we'll try it standing up. He put it in. He took it out. We hugged each other and we cried. That was it. Wow. So maybe. You both it, cried? Yeah. That's a lovely. It, That's yeah, lovely. It, you know, but when I think about like that was my first time, it's like there was no time. It was like a 15 second boop, 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 beep, yeah. bop, boop. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> like, there was no foreplay, was obviously. No. You didn't get off. No. Right. But it I was mean, so, did, did it felt on. That's No, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened except for it happened. And it was like, this is, this is great. Of course, after that, we fucked like rabbits for two years that we were together. But like, when it first happened, there's just so much... I feel like there's just so much anticipation and like anxiety, but also excitement about having that first time. But it's never, if you would have told me when I was like, I don't know, whenever I first learned about sex that my first time would be surrounded by packing boxes, standing what up the in tears, the middle of a room. Of what? I think just like excitement for each other. Oh, wow. This is actually one of the loveliest experiences I've ever you heard think before. So? It really is. I honestly feel like I, I thought in my mind it would be like on a bed of roses, there would be maybe not champagne because I was too young, but like maybe champagne shit. But like, <laughs> like a, you know, chilling. Well, yeah. I mean, sure, grape the cider. aesthetics could have been better. But yeah. I think that the conversation before there was no coercion. Both of you really wanted it. It was symbolic for you. You got together, and I mean, yeah, the sex could be better. But I think the fact that you cried afterwards and like, wow, we just shared yeah. something really special together, and you both would look back and remember it that way is really cool. I wonder if he looks back. Maybe he does. I haven't talked to him in forever, so I have no idea. But Shout like, out to you, X. Also, exactly. don't listen to this podcast. Not for you. Uh, no, not for you. Please don't put too much emphasis on because, you know, you, you gone, gone. So don't worry about that. But, like, I feel like most people, when they think about their first time, it, it it's not at all what you think it's going to be. So I feel like if you don't have any idea of what it's going to be like, don't put too much pressure on it being some kind of aesthetically pleasing experience because sometimes it's not like that mm -hmm. sometimes it is in the back of a car and that's fun too like you know i think that we just have it in our minds that it's going to be that we're going to for sure orgasm it's going to be the most incredible experience of our lives or some people have like that fear of like am i going to bleed am i going to like what's going to happen but i just feel like we put too much pressure on it i think if sex is authentic that is to me the baseline benchmark of yeah. a good sexual experience and authentic can be that the other person couldn't get hard and mm. we talked about it and had a great conversation afterwards and nobody got off but we got to a different level of intimacy yeah. and we allowed ourselves to be in that space given the circumstances that came up and i love authentic sex in all i have my my husband and start off as my fuck buddy can we swear in this oh, podcast i keep uh, it's called relationship okay good you know what i just keep being so like casual <laughs> yes. with the language don't be casual Sorry. with the do not unleash the beast um but at the time that i met my husband i was looking for a fuck buddy and mm. i mean like i was auditioning people <gasps> so i would have a how dude did come that over. work i have somebody come over we'd make out and then i'd be like yeah I could, not my vibe and so I just kept doing that. I was at a phase in my life where I was not in a healthy mental space. I was, I'm an immigrant to America mm. and I was at risk of being deported. So nothing was really stable. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I just need pleasure for pleasure's sake right now. Right. So I would just put on a sports bra and some sweatpants, play some Beyonce, invite a dude over. We'd kick it. If we made out, so be it. And yes. if I wasn't feeling the vibe, they'd go home. And so my husband came over and he was in that like group of people and he, uh, got past the makeout and he started like going down on me and when he was going down on me he was fingering me and the look on his face was that of like a painter like it was like he was so in tune with wow. the work you know oh. like really authentically showing up in the moment and i was like this is great yes and i just feel like your story just sounds like authentic thank you <laughs> 
myself in the U-Haul boxes next to me at the time. Thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> because it didn't feel like that after. Well, it did in the moment, but like after I had like a, a, a actual sexual experience in a bed, I was like, oh, oh, this is nicer. I like the bed. We'll see like my experience in my first time. You know, I didn't even know the person that was there first time. Like that was how inauthentic right. that experience was. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And honestly, even when thinking about like you talking about that experience with your husband, which literally almost made me tear up because oh, so beautiful. I feel, I feel like, like I was in the basement hugging you guys as you told the story. <laughs> I could feel my soul <laughs> yes. creeping down the stairs Just and then being like, I'll join this hug. Admiring. I know. Oh, my God. But I feel like, you know, even if you have had sex plenty of times, when we think about like what's the best sex you've ever had in your life, I always feel like it's not necessarily about like, if I'm speaking like heterosexually, it's as a woman, like it's not about like the biggest dick I've ever had or like the, you know, whatever. It really is about the connection for me, like the emotional connection that you have with someone, I think is so much more important than like the physical, the physicality of things. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I agree if you agree. I agree that whatever is important to you is what you should prioritize. And if you feel like, and a lot of people agree with that, yeah. like that should be a normal way of thinking about sex of, I'm a really big fan of sex needs two things to be great at the base. You know, me three authentic, I'll add that to the list. As of today, it's my yes. third thing. Yes. Uh, but consent, uh -huh. massively important. Intent, mutual intent, and then authenticity. But to me, mutual intent is like, why do you want to do this? Yeah. Do you want to do this because you want to get to a level of intimacy with me that you haven't achieved before or that you want to get back to? Do you want to do this because you just want to nut and go to sleep? Mm, do you mm -hmm. have a Charlie horse and having an orgasm helps you get rid of that? Like if you've yeah. got one idea of what you want and I have a different idea of what I want, we're not going to have the best sexual experience together. Because to me, good sex isn't just about the moment. It's three weeks after. Right. Do I look back on that and be like, reminisce and say that was a great time or do I get that feeling of guilt in my stomach of like oh why did I do that yeah and if I have that was it really great sex so I think that intent part is really important and for a lot of people their intent for having sex is to share in a deep emotional bond and then to have that manifest in the physical yeah and if that is your intent finding somebody who's on the same wavelength is make or break for good sex that just hit me in the heart like a, a ton of bricks oh, that was wow. that hit very deep deep Tell in my more. in my gut Tell me more. just because like it really is what matters to you and like that connection with someone I think is kind of when you feel that connection with someone it's because I I could be wrong and I'm trying to take more of like your vibe of like if you believe it to be true I believe it to be true because <laughs> your truth is is valid because it's true but like when you think about you know both parties or however many parties you got um feeling seen and feeling understood in the moment and like those your needs and wants being mutual versus you know when you have sex partners who it's like I don't know what you're getting out of this but it feels completely different for me like some people it literally is just like an itch that you want to scratch and yes. other people it's like that I need like deep emotional connection um I feel like it's different for everyone but I guess for me the definition of the best sex that I could ever have would be with my boyfriend currently because we have such an emotional connection mm -hmm. that I always feel like he's in tune with me and vice versa. What is the best sex to you? Oh, yeah. Because I'm trying to think because I've asked this question to multiple people and then the range of responses I get is I was on a backpacking trip by myself and I took a certain drug and then I met a stranger in the forest and we had mm. some amazing sex or I went to a bathhouse or yeah. you know it was like the first time that I had my prostate milk to buy a prostitute so it doesn't I need have to, to know be... what the prostate milking is because I, you said this okay. before we started recording and <laughs> I am confused I just listened to an episode on the way over here where somebody was describing their first prostate orgasm so that's why it's on my mind but um I think like yeah so the range of experience that I've heard that people like declare is like their optimal or ideal sex experience has been different and mm -hmm. for some people it's been that emotional connection um and for some people it's just been a new physical experience some people it's been something integrated with a spiritual awakening uh, mm. for some people it's like i was with a, a sex worker who was damn good at their job and i was like this is great this is great <laughs> five stars yes yes do you have a yelp page yes um so i my best sex 
definitely been with my husband, but I'm trying to think if that was a result of our, because we've gone through so many iterations of great sex mm. because we got together and the goal was great sex. We had really good sex in the beginning when I didn't even like him. Not that I disliked him. <laughs> I had no interest in getting to know him. Right. So right. I didn't, I wouldn't even consider him a friends with benefits in the start because I didn't want to be his friend. I literally needed a physical release and I was studying sexology at the time. So I was in school learning all this great stuff and I didn't need someone to practice it on. It's so like, yeah. I just needed a body. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I had great sex with him and I didn't even like him. But yeah. now that we have a kid together and a life together and we have great sex um, too. So. I mean, I think authenticity, I think, is the mm -hmm. thing for me. No matter what phase the relationship is in, if I feel like we're really bringing our truest self and we're responding in the moment, the sounds are unique, the, yeah. the way that you look at me is unique, the way that my body moves, your body moves. Like, if you get to that place where we're really, it's not performative at all and it's really vulnerable, like, that's great sex to me. Yeah. Well, what I admire about you and your husband, shout out to Jared. He has yes, a podcast, too. he does have a podcast, too. Called... Enjoy hope you the like the, enjoy the podcast he will be so pleased <laughs> yes with this moment well listen i just love you guys's relationship while some of the things that you guys you Can know we double date yes okay great why not okay we love other couples i so. need you guys to teach me and gordon something about communication because the way you guys communicate oh, wow. even though some of the things you guys talk about i'm like i couldn't do that yeah but and i don't want to do that and i don't want to do that but <laughs> they they are so open and honest with each other i just feel like you guys know each other like to the core and as a water sign like that's very important to me i need somebody to know me like deep to my toenails i need you to understand me and i feel like you guys have that was it were you both just like this like you both just knew how to communicate like what you want out of each other and like sexually and just like in general you were just you met like that i think so you know what i think the original way that we grad or to me he graduated in my mind from being a fuck buddy to a friends of benefits is because we would we went on hikes and we both had a passion for the why and we both loved the quote the unexamined life is not worth living we actually had mm. a youtube channel called the examined life like 20 seconds together but we both really liked examining ourselves and our life and our experiences a lot of people don't yeah and i don't think it's a bad thing yeah because i look at people who have mystery going for them mm -hmm. and i'm like that's wow. amazing I cannot do it. <laughs> yes. It's sexy. It's hot. Yeah. And I've read so many books that say that mystery is a massive important component to relationships. Mm. It's what keeps desire going. Yeah. It's in the unknown that lust can really find its legs and fly. Yeah. Um, so I should have said find its wings and fly. That would have been a much better analogy. <laughs> Both but, work. <laughs> nobody flies with legs, bitch. Yes. Ah, I guess, I guess, I guess. You don't know do. how people fly. No, not chickens. Their truth is valid. There we go. Their truth is valid. <laughs> so I feel like, yeah, it's just that uh, for us, it is like that. And we're both like that. And we like talking about things, like examining ourselves and our experiences. But for some people, don't ask, don't tell mm. is actually the secret to the success of their relationship. Yeah. Because I know you're a Taurus. Aries. What? Yeah. April 2nd. April 2nd. I fucked that up. You're an Aries. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't subscribe to this way of thought, so I'm open to all interpretations because yes. I'm just like, teach me. I thought, I don't know why I thought you were Taurus. What is Jared? He's born, Dis no, he's born October 7th, Libra. <gasps> wow. His birthday's that's coming beautiful. up. He's turning 30. Oh, so, yeah. That's a good match, I feel like. But if you're not in the city, I'm not even going to get into the whole reason why, but there's a reason why. It makes I've sense. heard this before, so you're not alone. Mm -hmm. It I've makes heard sense. before that there is a, my dad is also a Libra, and I like my dad, so. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just feel like you guys, I don't, I, you guys are just beautiful. I just, I admire the open and honest, even if it, even if there is a chance that the, your honesty can hurt the other person's feelings. Oh yeah, and it's definitely happened before. I think that that was a, uh, I mean, it's great because, and in those times you have to be so mindful of your face mm -hmm. because it's the honesty that you want, not the response. And you have to right. really tell yourself that. Like, right. I don't want you to say this certain thing. I want you to say what's on your heart. But sometimes what's on your heart fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. So when I was pregnant, um, I was like, you're not like horny anymore. Like, what's going on? Like, you, is your sex drive gone? He's like, no, I masturbate. And then I was like, I was like, oh, wait, I think so I, saw, I saw this in a YouTube video. Yeah, and like, the zoom in on your face was like, yeah, <laughs> I 
I was like, like stay what? neutral. Eek, stay eek, neutral. Because <laughs> I was really horny and I really did want, and I was always initiating. Mm. So I was like, what's going on? Like, you must have just dried up. And he's like, no, I have a high sex drive, just not with you. And um, I mean, <laughs> right, which is also fine because if he's like, I've never been more attracted to you than when you were pregnant, I'm not pregnant forever. Yeah. So, Ooh, you know, yeah. it's kind of a thing of like, okay, well, that's like a te- the temporary version of me. And he also had a hard time with the concept of the baby being in there mm-hmm. and the baby being in the room. Yeah. So that was just a thing in, in general. But yeah, I think you have to devote yourself to wanting the truth more then you want a certain response. That's a really hard place to get to that I still struggle with. Mm. Wow. Well, let's get into uh, some people's truth because the people have a lot to say. And I want to make sure that we get to, there's like a lot of overarching questions, but there's also some specific ones. Do you do your own um, makeup? Yeah. It's so good. Oh girl, I don't have time. For Even to your to lashes are- I don't do those. Seamlessly. These are extensions. Okay, it's <laughs> phenomenal. But you have, these are your lashes? They are, yeah, because I can't be you. Girl, bye. No, because you are what I pay to be. No, that's not that's, true. You're you know a little bit is. more. You know it. Mm, okay, no. listen, we're flirting right now, everybody. No. Sorry, back to your questions. <laughs> I know, we're, we're off track. Um, a lot of people had questions about pregnancy sex, actually, mm. because there are a lot of people, and even people who have not been pregnant, that are like, I just don't feel sexy. And I, I see that a lot with, like, new new moms and like new parents that have been asking questions about um how do I kind of get like my sexy back how how was it for you I think a really big thing is to meet yourself where you are Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are we have these even a mindset is aspirational like get confident with your body like just be confident like you can't just like I can't just be great at golf yeah there's a process and there's a period of time that it will take before I'm there and so from then to now I can work on myself in ways that are small and meaningful and impactful towards my long-term goal but in the meantime I got to meet myself where I am today Mm. and if today I'm not confident then today we're having sex with the lights off period (laughs) today I'm having sex with a full bodysuit that's fishnet yeah that keeps things together in a way that I like you know today we're using lube because I'm not sure if I'm going to lubricate or not and I don't want to put myself in that position of being like oh shit like we're now five minutes in and I'm really uncomfortable. Yeah. So it's meeting yourself where you are and purchasing or putting yourself, putting a plan of action around that you know you're gonna be comfortable in regardless of how you show up or how things end up being. Yeah. So don't think about like, here's who I want to be. Think about here's who I am and what does the me right now need to give myself the best chance of letting go in the bedroom. That's right. the goal, right? The right. place where you're not thinking about laundry and your insecurities and what's wrong with you or what's wrong with the world the place that you're just in complete pleasure right Um, and there might might be some things that you have to do preemptively to get to that spot yeah i think that we had a lot of questions about people who are like i just don't feel sexy during sex and i don't know how to make that happen but i feel like there's like some things that you can do but i think that there's like this idea that if you have a high sex drive then automatically just in the bed you're just like fucking raging yeah. looking incredible no. wearing red lipstick in the fucking teddy i don't want to put on lingerie every time i'm fucking i don't want to do that's a lot that's a lot for me i would like to put on a body oil a nice fragrance oh wow maybe light a candle yes that and that's, feels great for me that's your great for me <laughs> yes so i think that's yes. what's important for everyone to figure out um i had sex with a projector for a while and i loved that because essentially you put a projector on yeah. behind you and then you just have it, you know, it was up against the bed so that we would have these like things across our body. So it just made it like <gasps> an artistic experience. And I wow. just, l- I felt liquid when I was doing that. So you can find, what is that hack? A colored yeah. light bulb, it could be a playlist, right? It could right. be a different, a wedge pillow. Wedge pillows, oh my gosh, when I was pregnant, I'm like, this is the hack. Because the bobby pillow? No, it's a pregnancy pillow. Well, there's a there's a pregnancy pillow, which is good, sort of, but the wedge pillows that are firm, uh-huh. so you don't have to, like, hoist yourself up. Uh, just made sex so much more comfortable. Yeah. Even receiving oral, it just made it easier, because if you went on it in, like, inverse, then you were a little bit upside down. Not I don't me know. on Amazon. Wedge pillow. The wedge <laughs> pillow. So... <laughs> And it doesn't have to be a thing you have to buy. It yeah. can just be a thing that you do. You go into the bathroom for five minutes before and you wrap your favorite Nicki Minaj verse or whatever your thing is. But yeah. stop just hoping. Start mm. getting a lot more intentional. I think that's the, the best bet. Right. A lot of people also had questions about, and even I have questions about, like, I guess, kind of pre-sex hygiene. 
because mm-hmm. I always, I'm going to be honest with y'all because this is a relationship. You know, I talk about the real shit. I always feel best when I'm freshly showered before sex. Yes. But then my boyfriend, you know, we'll have a good night out. We'll be out on town having a good old time. I'm a sweaty bitch. I sweat a lot. Okay. So I get very hot. So I like to be fresh. So as soon as we get back, we could have been drinking, having a good old time. I'm like, I'm going to take a shower. He's like, don't take a shower. I don't care. I am going to fall asleep if you go and shower for 20 minutes. I'm like, I just have to do this for myself. And then I come out of the shower. I'm glistening. I'm shaved. I'm, you know, shit showered and shaved. And I came out and he's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what, what am I supposed to do? Should I just give in? Like, should we just not care about that? I think that a lot of people, especially women, have an insecurity about kind of like just natural body sense and activity. What do you say to that? Well, if you know that even if you did just have sex, you'd be constantly thinking, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to let go and feel good, then you're doing the right things. Yeah. You're just like, I'll I'll take my chances. Yeah. If it matters to you, stay up, drink a coffee. Exactly. Do something. Walk around. Walk around. Go for a jog. (laughs) Yes. Get some fresh air. Eat a snack. Eat a snack. (laughs) (laughs) But if it's more about the conditioning that society has mm-hmm. placed on you that your body needs constant overcorrection yeah that you need to tweeze and pull because the way that you naturally are is disgusting that's when you can start to dismantle those and say is that actually how i feel about myself or how i've been trained to think about myself right um and i know for me i've never been a big hygiene person so I remember like early in my relationship with Jared, um, we went to a club, we had a great time, we came back, but I was on my period and I was sweaty mm. at the club. Like I like to dance and like really, mm-hmm. I'm there for the workout. Yes, I don't period. drink, so I'm there for the workout. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I came back and I was like racing ahead of him to try to like get cleaned up mm. and then also shave because I didn't shave, I had the wrong underwear on. And then he was like, oh my God, go put a black sheet on the bed and yeah. just meet me in the bedroom. And I was like so turned on by that. <gasps> but that was because I'm already kind of a dirty bitch. So I was like, mm. finally. <laughs> Somebody who understands me. But if you're like, ew. <laughs> yeah. Because there's other things that are important to me that right. may not be important to you. So I, the most important thing is like, how do I get to a space where I feel sexy? Mm-hmm. Esther Perel, the therapist. Oh, amazing. She's a really like, to me, she's such an iconic sex educator in this space. But uh-huh. she talks about that... Uh, it's proven that women's greatest turn on is themselves. So I actually agree with that. You know that tweet song? There goes yes. my shirt. Do you know it took forever for people to realize that she was talking about masturbation mm-hmm. in a mirror? She wasn't talking about like being with somebody else. She was talking about being with herself. Yes. So I fully agree with that because if I feel sexy, then automatically everything that we're doing is about to be bomb. But if I feel like shit, ain't shit popping off for me personally it's very hard to get to that place where like mentally i'm checked in if i'm already like been checked out yeah you have to look me. at yourself and be like i want to have yeah. sex with me yes exactly do you self-pleasure to oh, yourself yes of course of course some people <laughs> need porn some i some a lot of people either don't masturbate at all or I, some people say that they get off better when they are masturbating versus like sex with somebody else and I think that even if you're having sex for the first time and you've never masturbated try it try it I I think that there's something to being able to tell somebody else what it is that you like and what you want Mm -hmm. don't you think so yes absolutely yeah I just feel like you how are you gonna if you haven't done it to yourself how do you know if you want it or not, or like what you would want or what feels best to you. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do find that having somebody else masturbate you is not, it's not the same. (laughs) It's not the same. Sometimes we just be missing the spot. You're like, oh, I love, uh, I love watching other people masturbate. Really? Especially my sexual partner. It's like my favorite (gasps) thing. I love it. Wow. Because you get to really see what they, there's something so human about it. Yeah. I really like it. But it's also like, could I do the exact same thing that you're doing? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you can do it for yourself feels great. Yeah. I don't know. I'm also, I'm um, very deep into lesbian TikTok. I'm not gay or bisexual at all, but lesbian TikTok, I feel safe there. And I feel safe with lesbian porn. I can't watch heterosexual porn. It doesn't do anything for me. I'm not really an avid porn watcher, but if I'm gonna watch, I'm not watching heterosexual porn because Mm -hmm. they just do too much. 
I don't need all that storyline shit. I want like, you know, conne- emotional connection. Yes. I don't know. Something's just different about it. You're not alone in that at all. There's, I feel like there's... It's extremely... Ext- I usually watch... I've only recently, because I started investing in uh, ethical porn, which is usually porn that's done by like a woman filmmaker and a woman director. Right. And yes. so I've started watching more kinds of porn because I now pay for my porn and I find that I like it better. But mm. if I'm on a tube site, I cannot go anywhere but lesbian because yeah. I don't want to be either person. I don't want to be anybody no. in this porn. No. I don't want to be the director. No. I don't want to be the man or the woman. <laughs> I feel bad for the camera person. Yeah. I'm like, why am I watching this 20 minute bukkake? This yeah. is not what I want to see. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. God. Okay. Going into more questions, just like direct ones, um, somebody said, is it always better when you love the person that you're having sex with? You know what I'm gonna say? If you think it's better, it's better. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) That's true. I think, yeah. Uh, No, that's exactly right. If you think it's better, then it is better. Sometimes it couldn't be better. Sometimes it could be better. I think it really just kind of depends on you and the other person. Because you could love somebody that you have no sexual chemistry with. Right. Or who's never given themselves the benefit of sex education. Yeah. Doesn't know anything and has lackluster techniques. Yeah. There were some questions from people who said, like, I am madly in love with my partner, but the sex is bad. What do I do? So to answer your question, person, no, it's not always better. (laughs) Right. That's no, that's the answer. What can what is your advice to those people where they have no sexual chemistry but they are romantically just head over heels for the person? If you have a partner who feels like they're willing to learn, you're in luck. That's like the base of it. So if you have mm. somebody who you think would be open to feedback cuz it's a skill. Right? Yeah. Like if you came to me and said my partner can't cook, what should I do? Yeah. I'd be like sign up for some courses yeah buy some books watch some videos get some pots and pans get some pots and pans get this <laughs> the cookware yes. practice practice in low-risk environments and have mm. a dinner party maybe where yeah. you debut some of their skills like start off with eggs start off with eggs start with rice yeah. you know what i mean like there is a there's a tried and true system that mm-hmm. we can put into place it's no different for sex yeah i think we make it so different but it's really just a skill set and like I think mm. it's more of a skill set like dancing, right? Because you could be a dancer who knows all the moves, but if you don't have that je ne sais quoi, that flow or flair to it, you're not going to look the same as the other dancer who does have that. Right. So yes, if there is a certain, you know, you can learn a lot technique wise, but eventually you have to make the moves your own. That's what makes you an exceptional dancer versus a dancer who knows choreography. Yeah. So I do think that, but you definitely can learn. If you have a partner who is willing to learn and is open to feedback, you're in mm-hmm. luck. Because some people aren't. Some people are like, I this work with my, my last girlfriend. We were together for 30 years. Okay. okay. And where is she now? Right. <laughs> well, no, I've had people, uh, my first episode of my podcast coming out is about my lack of ability to orgasm from penetration alone. And I actually went mm. and got something called the O-Shot, which is like, <sighs> platelets injected into your clitoris and g-spot in hopes of making it more sensitive so that you can orgasm Did it work? that way it didn't work fuck it didn't work for me was and it expensive no is it i mean it depends what your version of expensive is mm. i don't think it was a thousand somewhere in that range mm. um but if it's like with the hopes that it'll work then it's worth it yeah i mean it, i could i could justify you know, if I really stretch my mind that mm-hmm. it did something but it didn't do the thing that i like wanted it to do mm. but in that episode, I had like submissions from other people who couldn't orgasm from just penetration alone. And people were saying things like they've had partners say, you're a lesbian. Like if you can't experience pleasure this way, everybody else did, you're the problem. You're you're confused about your sexual orientation. Okay. So those are the partners you can't teach. And if you're listening to this and your partner is telling you anything is wrong with you because you can't achieve something that they have achieved before with somebody else, run. Literally tell them to go fuck themselves because what is that? What is that? And especially like in, with something with a topic that the reason why we're keeping everybody anonymous for this episode is because the topic of sex is so like vulnerable for people. Mm-hmm. And when you're speaking so uh, ignorantly about something that's vulnerable for someone, it's just like, who the fuck are you, sir or ma'am or who? Yeah. What? 
How, like, who are you to say that to somebody? I That's mean, it's crazy. a mass projection of their own insecurities mm. that they're placing onto you and not realizing the damage that they're mm -hmm. doing, right? The damage that's been done to you, you're not just passing on. So right. it's unfortunate, but yeah, there are, to your point, definitely people who they're just not teachable. Yeah. And maybe they will be in five years, but not all of us have five years. Mm. Good luck to them. How about that? Um, let's see. Okay, somebody said, what do you do if your sex drive is drastically different from your partner? This is the most popular question that I have seen in the past two years by far, since the pandemic began. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I've been affected. Have you been affected by the pandemic? Oh, for sure. I mean, like, I got pregnant, and so, yeah, mm. we had different sex drives. Mm -hmm. Obviously, maybe not. He had a yeah. sex drive with himself, but <laughs> yeah. didn't, it didn't cross over onto this territory. Yes. Oh my God. It was a one-way street. See, uh, I just wasn't having it. It wasn't happening. There was just, a, it, it wasn't happening. But like, I think that's, that's true. Like over the past two years, a lot of people have been experiencing ebbs and flows in their sex drive. Mm -hmm. Well, what it's do you more do? stress. It's yeah. more time. Whatever your usual routine was, like you described a sex night out as mm -hmm. like we went out we had some drinks we we're at a club we mm -hmm. came back like you can't do that anymore mm -mm. now it's like we were at home all day Getting long drunk. together uh, in, in the sweats. house <laughs> i cried for a few hours yeah. their mom called and had a panic yes. attack and then he was playing call of duty yeah. <laughs> like, literally that literally that <laughs> they got drunk and i yelled at them and then after that i went, took a shower and then we decided to have sex you're like that's yeah you know so it's very normal uh i would say be be honest about it, talk about it, really put it all out there on the table. Um, compromise doesn't always have to look like a middle ground of people's desires. Mm -hmm. It can actually be two heads coming together and coming up with a solution that's greater than any one individual could have thought of. Mm -hmm. So maybe what your sex drives look like ideally to you as individuals is one thing, but when you bring all that together and you put it on the table as partners, you might be able to find out a configuration that you didn't even realize would be perfect for both of you. So mm -hmm. I just think it's so common, and the reason why nobody has a fast answer for you is because there is no fast response, but the best thing you could possibly do is like lay it all out on the table, take stock of what the truths are again be more curious about what their answers are versus you know what you want them to say yeah and then from there make a really informed decision about what's healthiest for not just you as individuals but as a couple yeah i we got a lot of questions about sex drive coming from couples who have been together for a really long time and a lot of people were saying like I, we've been together for nine years like the sex drive just isn't what it used to be how do i spice it up yes what's your advice for spicing up your sex life I think accepting, I love this fact, um, that if you continue to be in passionate love with somebody, and passionate love is when that person walks into the room, like your dopamine levels spike, you get mm -hmm. an adrenaline rush, you get butterflies, right? Whenever they touch you, when you see them, you're just like, you get wet instantly. Like mm -hmm. those feelings that we yearn for, that we think are markers of what must love actually be. Like, I love you because I can't get enough of you. Mm -hmm you would shorten your lifespan if you constantly felt that way towards somebody because it damages your tissue every time you have adrenaline rushes and it's a spike in cortisol which is a stress hormone which you know elevates your heart rate and oh it God. makes your pupils dilate and so if you were constantly in that state of in essence fight or flight around yeah. your partner for 20 plus years you'd shorten your lifespan so for your survival love has to shift from being this like exciting i can't get enough of you like i lust for you to companion it which is more i appreciate you I value you. I adore you. Wow. Um, and so acknowledging that, not that it could change, that in your best case scenario, it will change. Yeah, or you'll die. Or you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so stop yearning for what it was. Yes. Stop like looking back like, I wish it could be that again. Mm. Like be grateful that it was that for that period of time, but be grateful that period of time ended. Yeah. And then now, you know, ease into what is the current truth, which is yet to be more intentional about it. See. And so spicing it up, like, I go back to the spaghetti reference, right? Like you make spaghetti at the same time every single day. All the, if you add sugar into the recipe, if you add thyme into the recipe, if you take the meat out, if you put extra tomatoes in, it's going to taste different to you. You change yeah. the noodles from skinny to thick. Like people think spicing it up means changing the dish. It doesn't. Just really small things can make it feel like a whole new experience. So mm -hmm. start there. What are the tiny things? Can we switch sides of the bed that we have sex on? Mm -hmm. Can we? play a video while we have sex mm -hmm. can we keep it silent lights on lights off projector on like those tiny things and then if anything else start watching porn ethical porn i like erica lust um 
Erica Lust creates porns on Lust Cinema that are based on people's fantasies. People write mm. fantasies and she creates films out of them. Watch those together. Get some ideas. Like, yeah. If you were an artist and you got to writer's block or a creativity block, what would you do to spark your imagination again? You would start like inviting content into your life. You would have conversations. Like mm -hmm. you wouldn't stay at the canvas. You would go out there into the world and gather more knowledge and information and bring right. that back to what you do. Right. Wow. No, that that makes so much sense because I feel like you know even in my own personal relationship, you know, I like to say it back to me. Um, when I first met my boyfriend he thought I was crazy. He was like, I can't keep up with this bitch. Yes. She's out of control. <laughs> She's going to kill me. Literally. He was like, you're going to, you're going to kill me. Like we can't keep doing it like this, but time goes on. And like, as you have our Shan told you, the honeymoon phase will kill you. So don't be trying to like seek after that moment for the rest of your life. If you're in like a long-term relationship, because it's just not, it, it it's not realistic. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have it in our minds that like, whoever we end up with, it's gonna be like this forever in this moment forever, but it's it's not that because you you get to know the person more. Like they might fart in front of you finally and you're like, Ugh, okay, well, that doesn't make me wanna get on my knees every time you walk in. Right, exactly. <laughs> like it changes, And the associations change. brought it, right? right? When you first get together with somebody, you probably only see each other in a romantic context. Mm -hmm. And now if you have a live-in partner, you see them and you think dishes, yeah. you think, oh, your mom called, or mm -hmm. you think we have this thing later. Like the associations that they now have are broad. That's right. a beautiful thing because you share a life together. Yeah, so yeah. So you don't automatically think sex every time, but in the beginning you did because that's really all you focused on. Yeah, no, it's so true. It's so true. So it's, it's things are supposed to change. Um, somebody said, is it normal to have pooped during climax? Oh, that sounds great. Um, it's normal, sure. I don't know if I have a lot of specific examples of that not happening during anal. I know anal people, you know, have that experience a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think that sounds like a natural bodily response. Yeah. Right? Because you have rapid contraction. You don't know what's going to come out. It, things if happen. it happens all the time, yeah. I might see a doctor. Yeah. Just because I think I don't have the knowledge. It's always just good to just ask. Go see a gynecologist. If mm -hmm. it happened once, be like, oh. <laughs> Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> shit my bad um you got some toilet paper no i mean think things happen i feel like shit happens shit happens it literally really you just want to be with somebody who doesn't make you feel bad about what comes out because and that's even, the authenticity component yeah, of it there know? was somebody who wrote in i can't find it right now but she was saying that she just, oh, here it is. There, here it is. I recently got diagnosed with a cervical issue that causes bleeding. There is no cure. My boyfriend is uncomfortable with bleeding, but I can't prevent it. How do I make it good for us? I feel like there, I, I know that there are a lot of people in heterosexual relationships where the, the man is not comfortable with blood, but I feel like, and it's, it's fine not to be comfortable. But it's not okay if they're making you feel bad about something that you can't control when mm -hmm. it comes to your body. So how how can she help that? This sounds like a medical issue, so I don't want to give a piece of advice that's like not what's healthiest for you. So mm -hmm. I would say bring this suggestion to your doctor. Mm -hmm. There is a cup that's specifically designed to have sex while on your period. It's called the Ziggy Cup. Oh. So most cups have the point at the end yeah this cup doesn't you pinch it it's like a it's a disc so mm -hmm. maybe that could be a solution for you because you would have penetrative sex and there would be no difference and then no blood would come out but it depends on again your health conditions wow i never even knew about that so i think it's that the ziggy cup from helpful. intima look at this all these shadows sponsors hi call <laughs> call. <laughs> call us <laughs> call us okay someone says why does sex gross me out and why do i feel so uncomfortable when my friends talk about it what a great question to unpack yeah do you ever have those things about yourself where you're like why do i feel that way yeah and then you're like oh yes why do i feel this yes. way and now you get to be on this tourist experience with yourself mm -hmm. like journey do a magic school bus moment yeah like what let's go back where did let's this dive. begin get into the bus yeah dive in go yeah. and look at it ask questions you know like uh technique and therapy would be to table like to actually have a conversation with that body part with that thing itself and ask mm. but uh, yeah i think that would be fascinating did yeah. you ever go through this phase i mean no yeah, i've always not. been very 
intrigued and Mrs. into Crawford. sex. Yeah. Shout out to you who's still listening right now. Uh, see? Yep, she's definitely still, oh my God. She's going to be like, I loved the episode. She's <laughs> like, she loves everything I do. She's a ride or die for real. But I, you know, I think that we have to also acknowledge this is a sex episode, obviously. There are some people who are not into sex. Yes. Asexual people exist. Yes. Great response. Great like response. that, that's okay. That's normal. That, like just because your friends talk about it, if you don't get those feelings, it doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It just means that you think differently than they do. I think. You no, know, phenomenal response. I think yeah. that's a really beautiful question to even ask yourself. Yeah. Is this an important part of my life? Is this is this included in my recipe of what a great life is? Right. It doesn't have to be. Right. Because some people, I have friends, but even people who who wrote in or like, I don't like getting head or I don't like giving head. Head is oral sex in case, you know, you know I'm just going to use the street, street lingo. Um, is that normal? Yeah, completely normal. Uh, I was on this podcast once and there was three hosts on this podcast. And the statistic, like a rough statistic is like 25% of people uh, can orgasm from penetration without any clitoral, outer clitoral stimulation, mm -hmm. like regularly. And around one third can orgasm without that stimulation, like once in a while. So mm -hmm. anyhow, an easy way of thinking of it is like two thirds of people require outer clitoral stimulation to orgasm, one third of people may not. And there was three people on this podcast and two of them were like, getting head is my favorite thing. I don't even mm. care about penetration. And then the other person was like, I don't like getting head. I only want penetration. And hmm. they were equally shaming each other. Oh. <laughs> so the person who didn't like receiving head, the other people were like, you're body shaming yourself. You're embarrassed about the way that you smell and taste. The reason why you're not enjoying it is because you don't enjoy your own body. Like you, you're, the patriarchy exists within you. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then the person who could... <laughs> receive you know or uh didn't like oral sex but like penetration was saying to the other people like you're too uptight during sex you're not letting go you're not allowing yourself to experience the emotions mm. like you're too heady yeah and i was just like sharing this stat like hey the way that you receive pleasure is valid the way yeah. that you receive pleasure is valid and it's okay if what your friend likes isn't what you like yeah that's all right so it's okay if you're like my clitoris is just too sen it's so sensitive it's almost painful mm. some people it is that experience for them yeah like it's so sensitive it's painful it's ticklish or yeah. it's not sensitive enough and there's no sensation what they prefer is something that's more vigorous so they like like uh deep thrusting or even just um humping like i know a friend mm -hmm. of mine a lot of people masturbate by just humping a pillow mm. or something very firm yeah so they need that more like firm uh, friction that's yeah. what gets them off so it's normal that not like head yeah hmm see listen there's I, there were also some questions somebody asked what does sex with a woman feel like for a man have you interviewed any or like even jared have you asked him like what does it feel like in there like what's in there i asked recently i was on a, a ask the or jk news and there was like five dudes there so i was like it's a great opportunity for me mm -hmm. to ask i'm like do you notice a difference from vagina to vagina like yeah. if you were blindfolded and yeah. your girlfriend was laid out on a table with four other people. Would you know? Would you know? And they were all like, nah. Fuck. No. They were like, I guess you Mine might different. kind of know. Because <laughs> the whole point, there's a book that I listened to that I, I liked. I can see how it could be problematic in some cases. But it's called Why Men Don't Love Women Like You. And mm. a part of the thing that he was talking about constantly is like, stop saying you have bomb pussy. That is not the thing that makes you a great lover or makes you a great partner. All pussies are the same. It's the attitude. It's the enthusiasm. It's the skill set. It's your desire to be there. But like there's no real difference in terms of sensation. Now, mm. there is pairings. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably more of an accurate thing to say. Like if you have somebody with a very small penis and you've got a wider vagina, mm -hmm. there's going to be a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and when I went and got that O shot done, you know, they do vaginal tightening there. And she mm. said that one of her clients described sex as throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Oh, Jesus. Like there was just no, so she would need a very girthy partner. So there are yeah. pairings that do have to, if you're on the larger side or on the smaller side, you probably would notice a difference. Yeah. But for everybody else in between, probably not as much as you would think. Wow. Well, you know what? 
I like that um, whole analogy that there there's no such thing as bomb pussy, but I'm going to go on the record and say mine is bomb. Tell us about it. <laughs> what mean, makes it bomb? It's, bomb? it's small. She's very tiny, but which is another thing. I feel like I was just having this conversation with one of my best friends because she was like, my pum pum fat. Like, I don't know. It's just big. It's yeah. big. And she was like, and I was with one of my other friends who has a small one. And she was like, we were just like looking at each other. It's like, huh, weird. You were, we're all different. No, not me. She was talking about her and her oh, other friend. Oh, how fun is that? But I've done that too, obviously. Mm. I mean, like, you know, girl shit. Like, I think, but I also think that a lot of times when, like, guys think about girl sleepovers, that's what they think about. But they think that we're, like, having pillow fights and, like, doing the most when really we're, like, let me you have an Audi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, interesting. Like, it's just so, I mean, you know, everybody has their own comfortability I'm just learning, Kim, and you've had a really progressive sexual coming of age yeah you yeah just if you, you all the right any things. of my friends like in high school they would be like cammy was the one who talked about sex the most yeah because i just have never felt shame about sex like it's a it's a natural thing people do it why are we not talking about it i don't know but i don't i don't have an issue with talking about it personally you obviously don't. <laughs> no, not now. But I had to teach. I'm almost doing this job in spite of. Mm. Right. It's not as a result of. It would make sense for me to be you. Right. Yeah. Too. Because it's yeah. a, a continuation of what good sex has done in my life. Mm. I'm doing this in spite of, like in the face yeah. of bad sex, in the face of shame, in the face of repression. So, But we need that, obviously. Like the people who are listening need that because, like I said, 74% never had the sex talk. I mean, did you ever get the sex talk, like a proper sex talk? I did sort of my – this is what my parents did that I I think was a good effort. They said, if you have any questions, you can ask. Mm. Which is fair, but you're putting the burden of responsibility mm-hmm. on a teenager yeah. to drive a dialogue that – they're uncomfortable with and they're not sure what's going to get them in trouble Mm. my parents are both medical too so my dad's a paramedic my mom is a nurse and Mm -hmm. i remember like everything was a symptom of pregnancy like by the time i was like a coming of age like i I was at the age that i would be having sex yeah if i complained that my nose was itchy are you pregnant are you pregnant like it was always that like so i was constantly on alert so yeah i'm not gonna ask you questions yeah because i'm afraid i'm gonna get into trouble (laughs) yes or you're gonna start making assumptions around what i'm doing if i ask a certain question and so they did try to open the door but i don't think that they uh i don't i think that if you're the adult you should be the one leading the Mm -hmm. the dialogue Mm -hmm. no i i fully agree i fully agree with that um somebody asked a question we're gonna find okay is it possible to be too wet yes Mm -hmm. where it's a problem Mm -hmm. not like a i don't think from like an std transmission Mm -hmm. problem i mean it is if it smells and that's bv which Mm -hmm. obviously like some side effects of yeast infections and bacteria vaginosis are excessive discharge so Mm. if you're experiencing that with discomfort or with the smell yeah it's definitely a problem but yeah i mean again going with the compatibility thing Mm -hmm. if you have got a smaller partner and friction is already a problem because maybe you're larger and also you're wet, then compatibility wise, that could not be good. Yeah. If you have a very large partner, it could be the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people buy lube for a reason. Like right. the wetter, the better. So could it be a problem? Yeah. Is it likely? Probably not. You probably have the opposite where people are like, oh, yeah. Bomb pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Pussybomb.com. Yeah. Congratulations. As long as it's not a medical issue, congratulations. Um, I think some a lot of people had questions about after care, after sex care, and like after sex hygiene. Mm. Um, someone, i probably not going to have time to play the voicemails, but uh, there were other people with the same questions about um, after sex care, just like in general. And also, is it okay if you're doing any kind of like anal penetration to then directly stick the penis into the vagina afterwards? Oh, no for that. Right. I mean, that's a wipe down. Mm -hmm. It's changing the condom. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but it's just not A to V, V to A, Mm -hmm. you know, back and forth, like turntables. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to like take a moment and pause. Yeah. Reset the activity. Yeah. Even if you're doing a threesome, you know, usually in that scenario, there's like somebody who's designated to the ass and someone who's designated to the other body parts. Really? Yeah. There's so much bacteria, you know, and, and if you get fecal matter in your eye, it's a problem, right? Right. Or underneath your nails or like it's just a breeding ground for 
mm-hmm. not things not to go well. Things are supposed to exit the bum yeah. and go into the toilet and never be seen again. Yeah. And it's okay to like engage that area, but you should also just be aware that like, yeah, it just needs an extra bit of care. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think basics wipe up with a, uh, warm water you mm-hmm. don't need soap definitely don't use you know soap that's scented or anything else like that that's could be irritating mm-hmm. wipe up with warm water or if you use a wipe that's fine too like a flushable wipe or disposable wipe and then pee after sex pee there's always. arguments for if men should or shouldn't pee just do it if yeah. you can if you're not erect and you have the capacity to pee afterwards mm-hmm. like just do that i think a big part of after sex care people should really talk about is the mental part like what do you do to Mm -hmm. digest that experience and feel good about it so again you can look back on that experience three weeks from now and feel good about that yeah like what is your after sex care routine (sighs) pee immediately Mm -hmm. and like my boyfriend knows don't let me fall asleep drag me out this motherfucker because i will go to sleep and i like to sleep afterwards he likes to chit chat he's a chatty (laughs) kathy i call him chatty kathy all the time he wants to talk about anything anything random if we're gonna talk i want to talk about the experience i don't want to talk about like where we're gonna take the dog tomorrow after we work like i don't want to talk about that but i have to pee because like i said she's tiny the coochie is small so my urethra is short Mm. so i had a boyfriend in high school that played basketball and like you know I was a cheerleader. He was a basketball player. So we were like, oh, this will be cute. We'll like have sex after the games. And I would get UTIs all the time consistently. So peeing after is my go-to number one. What about you? Yes, definitely peeing Mm -hmm. and then wiping up with water. And then I do need to either talk about it or cuddle. Mm. Like there needs to be like a close, like an agreed upon close. Yes. I don't like to just like separate and pretend it never happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if it's day sex, I need like 10 minutes where we just like are still lovers. Yeah. Like I don't want to feel like the exchange is over. Yeah. And maybe that might be nice for like a role play, like for a hot thing once in a while. Mm-hmm. But I do still want to feel like you do still, I'm still your lover afterwards and you're still turned on by me afterwards and tuned yeah. into me afterwards. Not like disposed. So if the person like kind of went to sleep <laughs> afterwards, I'd be like, wake up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> I actually saw a TikTok the other day that kind of annoyed me. It was about like aftercare cleanup. And the girl was saying, if the guy that you're having sex with doesn't hand you a towel after sex, dump him. Okay, this one's a good one. Why the fuck does noisy air always come out after doggy style? What is the science? I mean, it's just uh, physics, I would assume. Yeah. Talking because about a good old fashioned something queef. Something is pushing in yes. while you're bent in a certain position and then you're bent like that. And then you, it's like when you're, you know, you're watering, you have the hose. Yeah. And then you've got like a crink in the hose mm-hmm. and then you undo it and then the water sprays out. Yeah. It's like the air is getting trapped in that one pocket and then you straighten up and then it just all flows out. Yeah. So, there's probably a physicist or someone that can come on and really explain why, but it feels like, yeah, science. Yeah, but I feel like people are really insecure about queefing. Some people probably don't even know. Obviously, the way that they put it is probably better. Why does noisy air come out of the vagina after doggy style or any kind of sex position that has you bent out of normal shape? But I call it queefing. But then when I said I said it to my boyfriend, because I, I queefed recently, <laughs> I was like, I wasn't a fart. <laughs> it was a queef. He was like, what the fuck is a queef? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's I sweet. was like, well, what do you call it? He was like, a pussy fart. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I call it a vart. So, a vart? Yeah. <gasps> but I like I like queef. It sounds... Queef. Yeah. It, it sounds, sounds like posh. it has a crown on. It does. <laughs> queef. It does. Look at your hand right now. Queef. A long cigarette. It's a queef. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, you have to come back. Yeah, speaking of long cigarettes, this uh, is what you do after sex. Yeah. Right, in the 80s films. Literally. Mm-hmm. Why don't people do that anymore? Lung cancer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, my God. Okay, Heart well, disease. thank you so much for this. I feel like everybody listening, you've definitely taken something away from this, but where can people find you if they want to hear more? 
So I have a podcast coming out October hey! the 6th. It's called Lovers and Friends with Sham Boudram and with Cammie Crawford, who yes. will be a guest on this podcast. Mm-hmm. It is, I have been putting out a podcast, girl, since 2004. Yes. So it's taken me so long to come up with a format that I like, to find a home that I like. I'm really mm-hmm. excited about it. And I would love if people just gave it a shot. Yeah. And obviously your Instagram, socials everywhere. Who YouTube, cares about that? TikTok. Who a fuck? Yeah. Don't, listen to the fuck a podcast. This is a podcast. <laughs> Listen she to the bad. It. If you don't listen to the podcast, you're gonna have seven years of bad sex. Ooh, uh, you give him that chain mail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Pass it on. <laughs> Thank you so so Thank much. Thank you so much. This is a joy. Hi, I'm Cami Crawford, host of the Relationship Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more videos, click below to subscribe and like this video for more Dear Media content. So shut up and listen. <laughs>